You know, you just can't help but feel bad for UMass. Since joining the FBS in 2012, the Minutemen have compiled a 21 and 103 record, with their best record since 2012 being just 4 and 8. Just 21 wins since 2012. Last year, the Minutemen hired Don Brown to help them try to return to that competitive form. Brown being the head coach of UMass from 2004 to 2008, where he went 43 and 19. But they still have a long ways to go to get back to that point. And even though Brown will enter his second year with the program, there may not be that much improvement. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country over there for one of the lowest prices in the entire country, beating out over 80% of the national analysts and handicappers each of the last five years. Don't miss out on that opportunity to sign up for those. Don't miss out on the opportunity to sign up for our Patreon account either. Exclusive content only on Patreon. Become a member of our Patreon wall of fame and get access to all the content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. And check out our mailing address as well. Send us some gear. Let's get some UMass gear. Maybe that'll bring us some good luck or bring UMass some good luck in 2023 as we look to expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. So UMass, man, uh, you know, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to talk about them. You want them to do well. It's one of those programs that's just been so bad for so long that you, you kind of have a soft spot for it. You hope that they're able to succeed. I just don't know when that time will come. I haven't been to a bowl game since the 70s. I haven't been really relevant at the FBS stage since they've been there. It, it's going to be a long, long rebuilding process. But if anybody can do it, it is Don Brown. The offense, you take a look at them this year. Seven starters are back, but they only averaged 12 and a half points per game last year. It was abysmal. Could not move the ball offensively. They've got a quarterback battle going on right now between about three different guys, but Blake Olson is the only one that had experience with the Minutemen from last year. He only threw for 791 yards, two touchdowns, and eight interceptions. This is a Minutemen team that averaged just 117 passing yards per game. But... They did average 149 rushing yards per game. The running game is certainly going to be their strength, and they returned four of their top five rushers. So the offense might take a little bit of a step forward if they can find some continuity and consistency at quarterback. Defensively, Don Brown's a defensive-minded guy. And their defense wasn't all that bad last year. Eight starters are back. They returned three of their top five tacklers from a unit that gave up just 175 passing yards per game. The secondary was pretty solid. It really was. They gave up 194 rushing yards per game. That's their weakness. But the passing defense is maybe the strength of this entire team. The secondary is loaded once again. So I wouldn't be surprised to see UMass kind of have the same numbers against the pass. If they can slow down the run, maybe they'll actually add an extra couple of wins or so after going just 1-11 in 2022. So you take a look at the schedule. You know, UMass has a, has a rough go around. I mean, they play at Auburn. They play at Penn State, at Army, at Liberty. But two big games there against those Power 5 teams. They face a... Mac heavy favorite in Toledo. I mean, it, it's a rough stretch for this Minutemen program. They open up the year in week zero at New Mexico State, an Aggies team that really surprised last year going seven and six. Jerry Kill did a phenomenal job uh, with New Mexico State. Last year, UMass losing 23 to 13 to the Aggies. And this New Mexico State team now, guys, has an opportunity to make some noise and get back to a bowl game. Nine starters back on offense, including their star quarterback and Diego Pavia. All the rushers are back except for one. Or all, the, excuse, all the rushers are back. All but one of their top pass catchers return. This offense should take a major leap forward. The defense wasn't all that bad either. It's out in New Mexico. I don't think UMass really has much of a shot in this one. New Mexico State starts off 1-0. and Our guy in New Mexico, Noah, your team, 1-0 and to start. Going to have a pretty solid year this year, I have a feeling, in the Conference USA. They go on the road to Auburn. You can chalk that up as a loss. I don't think the you know the Tigers are going to have much issues there, especially with the new coach and Hugh Freeze. Just start to fix things down on the Plains. Then they take on Miami, Ohio. Back-to-back -back games against MAC opponents in Miami, Ohio, and Eastern Michigan. Uh, the Red Hawks, though, are good. They were a good team. They were a legitimate MAC contender this year. Brett Gabber is a very experienced and good quarterback, one of the better quarterbacks in the entire conference. Nine starters are back on defense after giving up just 22.6 points per game. Keep in mind, UMass last year only averaged 12.5 points per game. You know, I think improvement for them would be getting to over two touchdowns. If they can average over 14 points per game, that would be an improvement. Even then, I just don't think they're going to have much success against this stingy Miami, Ohio defense. So give me the win there for the Red Hawks. Give me the win there for the Eastern Michigan Eagles, 
who will have a field day against this UMass defense. Why? Because the Eagles have a guy named Samson Evans at running back. He rushed for over 1,100 yards last year, 15 touchdowns. I think he has a big day against this UMass rushing defense. And again, allowed over 194 rushing yards per game last year. And I don't know if they'll improve by that much. So just like that, UMass is 0-4. I don't know if that comes as a shock to too many people. They take on New Mexico State, Arkansas State, and Toledo. Three consecutive home games for them, which is beneficial. And I'll tell you right now, they're getting a win, either New Mexico or Arkansas State. They will split those two games. And I think their win's going to come against New Mexico. And here's why. Here is why. You look at the Lobos right now. Eight starters are back on offense, and they added a key transfer at quarterback in Dylan Hopkins from UAB. That's huge for New Mexico. And offense wasn't very good last year either, so hopefully they'll take a little bit of a step forward. The problem is the Lobos just can't put it all together. The offense might be solid. The defense won't be. Rocky Long left New Mexico, went to Syracuse. They lose everybody defensively, only two starters back. And this is a, a New Mexico team, guys, that defensively gave up 157 rushing yards per game last year. I think UMass actually might have some decent success on the ground against this defense that's just depleted. I mean, nobody's back on that side of the ball. Factor in home field advantage. Factor in New Mexico is going all the way across the country to play the Minutemen. I think they win this game. If they don't beat New Mexico, I believe they will. If they don't, they'll beat Arkansas State, who they nearly beat last year in Jonesboro. They only lost to the Red Wolves 35-33. to It was their best offensive performance of the year, 475 yards of offense against Arkansas State last year. Their highest, again, highest offensive output. It was unbelievable performance. And had their two-point conversion not got stuffed literally like at the goal line, they would have tied that game, and I feel like they probably would have won the game in overtime. So that, that kind of gave UMass fans and that UMass team a glimpse of hope. Like, yes, they lost, but it showed they could win on the road, might maybe win on the road, or at least have better offensive performances. A-State, though, Butch Jones in must-win mode. He's got to win, otherwise he's gone. Hasn't gotten the Red Bulls to a bowl game. If he doesn't get there this year, he's out of a job. How mighty, how quickly the mighty can fall, right? But A-State loaded up on transfers, especially up front on the offensive and defensive lines. Improved quarterback play with J.T. Shroud, more than likely getting the starting job. Give me A-State to get the win, not nearly as close as it was last year. I do think, again... UMass wins one of those two games. I'm leaning the Lobos. Wouldn't be shocked at all to see it be the Red Wolves, though. So they got a win on their schedule. They've matched last year's win total, and regardless of who they beat, they're getting a win over an FBS opponent. That, in and of itself, is a little bit of a sign of improvement under Don Brown. They'll lose Toledo pretty handily. They lost to the Rockets 55-10 to last year. They are the MAC favorites this year for a reason. They'll lose in dominating fashion to Penn State in Happy Valley. Then they get their first bye week of the year. Again, they'll get two bye weeks because they play in week zero. They'll lose pretty handily to Army. They allowed 329 rushing yards to the Black Knights. Lost 44-7 to to them last year. The game's at Mikey Stadium. Don't see them winning that. I do think they'll beat Mary Mack, though. They'll beat an FCS team. Should beat the FCS team. And that gives them two wins. That doubles last year's win total. Two wins isn't great, but when you consider that since 2012, their best season was 4-8, and eight, hey, You'll take anything you can get. Take any win you can get. Shows improvement from the Minutemen. I think they beat Merrimack there, get their bye week, and lose their last two games to Liberty and UConn. They fell to the Flames 42-24 to last year, and they take on a UConn team that they also fell to by 17, allowing 274 rushing yards last year to the Huskies. And now UConn returns 17 starters, including their top two rushers, including improved quarterback play, and their strength in the trenches, offensive line, defensive line, going to be solid. Should blow UMass off the line, and UConn should win comfortably, especially if the Huskies are fighting for bowl eligibility in the last week of the season. I think it's a very real possibility. So with that, guys, UMass goes 2-10. and 10. What else would you expect? I mean, this has been a pretty rough go-round for this program. Don Brown, I think, will slowly but surely get them back, but obviously playing at the FCS level versus the FBS level is a completely drastic change, and making that transition is much harder than people realize. UMass shows a little bit of improvement. They're certainly more competitive. They double last year's win total. They get at least one win over an FBS opponent. But after that, not much else to hang your hat on. Year three will be huge for Don Brown with the Minutemen. I think they show a little bit more improvement next year. But still, it's going to be a long, long ways away before the Minutemen can finally start being truly competitive at the FBS level. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on 
YouTube, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Our next conference, it begins on Monday. We've got three Power 5 conferences left. Who's it going to be? Come back on Monday to find out. Don't want to miss those videos either. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out any of the future content. As always, check out everything down in the description below. Our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year-round. Our mailing address to send us some gear to be featured every single Gridiron Expert video from now through eternity as we expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.